we are standing on the overlook at Trapper's Point, just west of Pinedale. Humans and pronghorn have been interacting with each other on this exact spot on the landscape for at least 8,000 years. Behind me is a small hill uh, that was designated as an archeological site in 1986. The then Wyoming Highway Department was contemplating building a new alignment of US 191 between Pinedale and Daniel Junction. And they asked us to come out and take a preliminary look at that new alignment. So we initiated a test excavation program to simply find out what was there. And what we immediately started finding of hundreds of, of chipping debris, flaking debris, butchered antelope or pronghorn bone, firecracked rock, many different types of tools such as knives, projectile points, scrapers. What's sitting in front of me are some examples of the types of materials we found in the Trapper's Point site. First, I have a, a small assemblage here of antelope remains. What you see here is what uh, your typical pronghorn carcass would look like. Throughout excavation, there were numerous uh, carcasses of pronghorn uh, remains found. It looked like a jumble of the bones you see here in front of you. In compliance with the National Historic Preservation Act, we were evaluating what might be adversely impacted by the proposed construction. This site turns out to be the oldest antelope kill processing area that's known in the state of Wyoming. As the sediments were preserved uh, on the lee side of the hill, we found three different cultural layers, the oldest of which was about 7,200 years ago, the second one was about 5,500 years ago, and the top one was about 4,300 years ago, filled with butchered antelope bone. What we were able to determine as well is that antelope, which we saw plenty of while we were out here excavating, used this ridge as part of a migration corridor. One of the unique things about Trapper's Point is that it occurs in the middle of a migration bottleneck. And what's interesting about this bottleneck is that it's naturally occurring. It's essentially a one mile wide by one mile long sagebrush ridge that connects the winter ranges of thousands of ungulates in the Green River Basin with their summer ranges uh, in the northern part of the Green River Basin and the mountains of northwest uh, Wyoming. Seeing pronghorn on the side of the highway is an everyday occurrence. We're used to it. We associate pronghorn with Wyoming. But it's rare that we really have the perspective to look at pronghorn across a huge landscape and to understand their movements, both contemporary on a seasonal basis and through prehistory. It's clear from excavations at the Trapper's Point site that I assume people living 6,000 years ago here in Wyoming thought seeing pronghorn was pretty pedestrian as well. But they had this much larger landscape view of where those pronghorn were going on a seasonal basis, could predict where they might be on the landscape, uh, and really capitalize on that. We know they were at that particular site to intercept those pronghorn as they were migrating and would take advantage of that aggregation of pronghorn. So some of what we learned from excavating these sites in a sense, sure, we knew pronghorn were out here in Wyoming, uh, and we have recently documented those migration routes, but it really gives us an insight into how people of the past understood this landscape and their relationship with the pronghorn. We were able to demonstrate the antiquity of that route, and I think starting to get a very multidisciplinary approach in terms of broad-term landscape use, long-term landscape use, and really uh, adding to the knowledge both of pronghorn behavior and human behavior in the process. People could have sat up on the ridge, maybe up here, maybe down a little bit lower, simply waited for small groups of animals to come by, uh, dispatch them with uh, maybe a throwing stick or in, you know, in later times a bow and arrow, and then brought them to the top of the hill, butchered and processed them uh, for future use.
To butcher and process so many pronghorn carcasses probably took hours, if not days. This would have been a major source of food for these populations. They would have spent quite a bit of time butchering and preparing the meat from these pronghorn animals to be consumed there at the site and probably later through their travels as well. From a contemporary wildlife management perspective, the archaeological work that's been done at Trappers Point is really fascinating because it has shown us that these animals have been migrating through this bottleneck for five, six, or seven thousand years. And that's really interesting because these migration routes are culturally transmitted. That is, they're learned from mother to offspring and passed on from generation to generation. So the fact that this migration could go on through millennia uh, is really interesting. This site here demonstrated that this uh, corridor has actually been in use for thousands upon thousands of years. And that the people who have lived here long before we did had a very sophisticated knowledge of the landscape. For me, this was very much of a game changer in terms of how I started looking at the archeological record, what we can learn from it, how we can start approaching landscape use. Trapper's Point is used by thousands of pronghorn and mule deer. Uh, the pronghorn that migrate through there migrate anywhere from 20 to 100 miles. Uh, the furthest of those pronghorn make it all the way to Grand Teton National Park. Based on years of radio telemetry studies, it's become clear how important Trapper's Point is for thousands of migratory pronghorn and mule deer. And because that area is bisected by U.S. Highway 191, wildlife vehicle collisions uh, began to increase as traffic volumes increased, which became a problem for both mule deer and pronghorn. It was a killing field out here with the loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of vehicles, trucks, passenger cars, some loss of life, human life, as well as loss of, of pronghorn. And we tried several different things in terms of warning systems to get people to slow down, uh, to be aware that there were animals on the road, particularly during the, during, uh, the migration periods, uh, none of which worked pretty well. We weren't seeing any particular success. So to mitigate that issue in 2012, the Wyoming Department of Transportation took on a really progressive and cutting edge wildlife crossing structure program where they installed two wildlife overpasses and six wildlife underpasses in a 12-mile stretch of that highway that encompassed uh, Trapper's Point. With a great deal of input, with a lot of data about where we were getting our most collisions, where the most dangerous spots were, of course, this particular area with the world's neatest archaeological site on it was selected for an overpass as one of the primary migration routes. Based upon our old test excavations and also additional ones that we did 20 some odd years later, we were able to determine that that particular location had very minimal archeological deposits because it had been very eroded and blown and there was not the same type of cultural remains as on that hilltop. Um, designed the bridge so that animals cannot see over the top of it as they're walking across it a truly multidisciplinary project along this wildlife corridor that it starts off with the overpass where we have essentially recreated the hill slope that antelope would have been using to cross before the highway was down cut into that ridge. The other critical element in all of this are you see the wildlife fencing that goes into all of that and also funneling animals to the underpasses for really close to 15 miles along this stretch of 191. We monitored those wildlife structures, those crossing structures for three years after construction and we found that those structures were used uh, nearly 85,000 times, uh, 60,000 mule deer crossings, uh, 25,000 pronghorn crossings. What was interesting there was the species specific differences. Uh, mule deer tend to move underneath the highway, but pronghorn, not surprisingly, really preferred the overpasses and more than 90% of those uh, 25,000 pronghorn crossings uh, were on the overpasses. The construction of overpasses and underpasses in and around Trapper's Point has effectively reduced wildlife vehicle collisions by more than 80%. So it's been a win-win, a win for wildlife and also has improved uh, 
highway safety for motorists. I think the success of the wildlife crossing structures at Trappers Point has served as a, as a model for not only Wyoming but other parts of the West in areas that have issues with wildlife vehicle collisions. It was a, a really neat, neat project in that here we have the archaeological data that we know is going on being used to address a modern transportation problem and a modern safety issue that we were able to bring the public, bring many different agencies and bring all our different expertise into the area and to, to solving the problem and at the same time preserving the archaeological site and helping restore some natural landscape movements. So in that respect, this is one of the major contributions of the National Historic Preservation Act in Wyoming, and it demonstrates how the past and the future can work together. For many people who will be driving down this highway, you'll just think it's another highway, and there happens to be some kind of funky overpass going on top of it. What that really indicates is that humans and pronghorn have been interacting with each other on this exact spot on the landscape for at least 8,000 years and perhaps even longer. And hopefully we will continue to be interacting between humans and pronghorn on this landscape for many, many thousands of years to come.